Hello everyone, it's Tom from CoaJoint here and today I have something very exciting to show you. I've got a new piece of software available on the Unity Asset Store called the Cutscene Editor. Now what differentiates this Cutscene Editor from other Cutscene Editors is the usability and the power. So in terms of usability it's extremely simple to use. Uh, once you've seen the software you will know how to use it. So once you've seen this video you'll be able to go straight away and use it to make very good cutscenes. Now, the power comes from the fact that I've taken a very programmatic approach, which is quite different from other cutscene editors which uh, sort of try to follow a sort of a, a movie cutscene editor sort of workflow. This uses our knowledge of Unity already to make these powerful cutscenes. So, you basically program cameras by putting scripts on them, and then you can stack those cameras up in the cutscene editor to make your cutscenes. It really is as simple as that. Now, what I think is the most powerful feature of the cutscene editor is the transition system. So there are three ways of making different cameras transition from each other. Uh, the first way is with a simple timer countdown. The second is when the method that's controlling the camera completes, so it returns. But the final method, which I think is the most interesting, is the predicate method. Now, what the predicate method means is that the camera will only transition to the next one when a separate predicate method, i.e. a method which returns a Boolean value, returns true. And we'll see a really simple but quite powerful example of that in a moment. So let's take a look at the cutscene editor. First of all, I have a scene saved here called test scene. And this scene contains a cube, a plane, and two cameras. Now each of these cameras have scripts on them, and they contain methods that we're going to be using to control those cameras. So let's just take a look at the test script here. The test script contains uh, three methods here, three important methods anyway, uh, called rotation count, look at cube, and odd shift. We'll be seeing each of those later on. But for now, just as an example of showing how easy it is to use the cutscene editor or to create behavior in our cutscene editor, uh, the look at cube method simply takes in a cube uh, as one of our script parameters. And then we use transform.look around to, to, sorry, rotate around to rotate around the cube that we're looking at. So you can see that setting up scripts to control our cameras is exactly the same as you would do, as you would use to control a game object in the game. Now also notice here that we can use coroutines, so this isn't our enumerator. So let's open up the cutscene editor now. The first thing to notice is these two buttons on the left here. This is the open cutscene button and the create new cutscene button. I've already got data for this cutscene, so I'm going to be using the open button. But if this is the first time that you're creating a cutscene for this scene, then you use the new button, or if you want to overwrite data that you already have. So let's press the open button, and that brings up a load of data here. Now, this list here, so one, two, three, four, shows you the order that our cameras are going to run in for this particular cutscene. Now, the transitions between this, this camera to the next camera, or one camera to the other, is determined by these drop down menus here. So, how does the cutscene editor know how to transition from one camera to another? Well, that's with these drop down menus here. So, this, these first two drop down menus here allow you to pick a method in a script that you're going to use to control the camera. So the first thing you've picked your script here, which is test script, which you'll see is a script on the camera here. The cut cutscene editor automatically detects scripts that are put on your camera, so you don't need to worry about that. Next, we have to choose a method to control the camera, which we're going to use the look at cube method. And uh, here's the interesting bit, which determines the transition to the next camera, which I call the transition condition. Now, for this particular cutscene, we're using a predicate method. Now, a predicate method is basically a method which returns true or false. Now, what's going to happen is that this main camera will run until this predicate method rotation count returns true. Now, the cutscene editor will automatically detect the predicates that are written on your uh, written into your test script or your script that you're using to control your camera. So here's the rotation count here, and as its name suggests, this method simply counts how many times the camera has done a rotation around our cube, and it returns true when the rotation count is two. So. This is another really powerful feature of the cutscene editor. I can preview the motion of this camera independently from any other camera in the scene. So if I press this button here, you'll see that the cutscene the, the cutscene and editor is controlling the camera rotating around the cube there. And this will run twice. So it will do two full rotations and then it will stop. So the preview will be complete.
There we go. So that's how the predicate method works. You can just determine a method that says, OK, when this method returns true, that's when I want to transition to the next camera. And that's a very powerful feature, I think. So more simply, on the main camera again, we're using the look at cube method. But instead of uh, using a predicate to determine when it returns, we're just going to count down five seconds. So let's press it now, and we'll see that in action. So we're previewing the motion. One, two, three, four, five. And there you go. Simple as that. And as a last example, let's look at the secondary camera using this odd shift function. And it's going to return or transition to the next camera when this odd shift method uh, completes. So odd shift, as you see here, is a coroutine. So what's going to happen is it, is, is it actually shifts from one position to the other and then stays there for three seconds using these yield return statements here. Let's, let's preview that motion now. So it's on one side. Three seconds later, it jumps to the other side, and then it completes. And that's really all there is to using the cutscene editor. You have predicates, you have countdowns, and you have method completes. You write, uh, you write scripts and which contain methods which you use to control your cameras, and they just operate in a procedural linear manner. So the last thing I'd like to show you is probably the most important thing about the cutscene editor, and that's the compile button up here. Now, what the compile button does is it takes your whole cutscene that you developed in the cutscene editor and it writes a script automatically to do your cutscene. So, when you press this button, it will generate a script called camera script underscore the name of the scene because you can only have one camera uh, cutscene per scene. You simply place that cutscene on an empty game object and this script on this empty game object will run the whole cutscene for you. So, let's press play now and we'll see that in action. So first of all, we're doing the look at cube on the main camera. So you can see that that is active now, and the secondary camera is is uh, is not, or it is, but it's not in control anyway. Now we're on to uh, odd shift. So it's doing the odd shift again, and then it will do the odd shift one more time. But this time, the odd shift is controlled by a predicate that will only. Uh, stop the camera's control, i.e. end the cutscene, when we click on the screen. So it's being controlled by a predicate here called mouse click. So let's click on the screen, and you can see that the cutscene finished. So I hope you see the power of the cutscene editor. Um, I hope you see how simple it is to use. You know, we've got up and running really in five minutes. It's really as simple as writing the scripts that control your camera, and then stacking them up, and then compiling your cutscene. Very simple, very easy to edit, much harder to do if you were just trying to do this via your own script and sort of editing your own features. Um, it's on the asset store now. There's a link in the, descri the, the description. Also, something else that I'll bring to your attention is the fact that I'll be showing you how I made this editor extension in a video tutorial series coming very, very soon. Um, it won't be exactly the same as this. It won't have the predicate feature. Um, so if you want the predicate feature, I'm afraid you have to buy the, the cutscene editor but um, it will show you how to build everything else with a slightly simpler user interface. So I hope you look forward to that. Uh, please like, subscribe, share these videos, get the word out about CodeJoint and our other products, and thank you very much.